Hey, what's up, my beautiful people? Welcome to this Pisces New Moon Astrology and Energy Forecast. Thank you for tuning in. I am the spiritual bodybuilder. You guys rock. I appreciate your support. Um, so let's jump right into this massively transformative energy that we're going to be experiencing here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the chart, show you what I am looking at. All right. So, um, this new moon, so a new, so a new moon is when um, the sun and the moon are conjunct. They're on top of each other. So this energy, um, you can't see it in the sky, uh, and it's, 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 a, it's a brand new start to this energy, okay? Of course, Pisces, Pisces is very mysterious. It's very mystical. It's, it's, it's connected to the collective unconscious, right? So here we are in this new depth, going to this new layer. There's, and there's going to be many layers like this throughout the year, okay? Let me tell you. Um, this one is unique and special, though, okay? Because of the other aspects that are going along with it. What's really big here um, is that Mars will be just two degrees away conjunct the south node in Capricorn, okay? Now, we have a ton of Capricorn, Pisces, and Aries energy going on. So, you know, um, there's two cardinal and one mutable. So that is like cardinal wants to start shit, wants to get things going, and this mutable is like, oh, wait, no, things are going to change, right? So it's like as we're getting started, we have a lot of new things happening in our lives, right? We have a lot of new, um, either new new business plans, new relationships, new feelings of our identity, new new gifts coming in, new new passions, right? Discovering, like maybe you just started working out or maybe you just discovered that you love painting. Maybe you just like, you know, met someone that just totally rocks your world and it's absolutely like bomb, but whatever it is, there's this in massive passion desire to get things going, right? But at the same time, as we get going, you're gonna find that there's a need to be flexible because you think it's gonna go this way, but that mutable energy in Pisces is like, oh no, we're gonna take this detour, we're gonna go this way, we're gonna make this happen, oh, hey, wait, we're gonna go back here. So that could be a little confusing. So we have to be really, you know, uh, we, we have Taurus uh, as well with Uranus there, which is a very fixed energy. But with Uranus, uh, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's a very unpredictable energy. So this is like, at the same time, we have this very fixed, oh, fuck, what's going to happen next, <laughs> right? We want to take control. We want to understand what's going on, but we're not going to know. We're not going to figure it out. The big thing with the Mars and South Node, okay, Mars is passion. Mars is desire. It's the divine masculine. It wants to go out there and make shit happen, right? It's the warrior. The South Node is about the past. It's about letting shit go. And with all this energy going on in Capricorn, okay, Mars is also exalted in Capricorn. So Mars loves, 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 loves being in Capricorn, all right? It's like Capricorn is this stable foundation where it allows the warrior to go do what it wants. But with the South Node, it's like, okay, we're going to go do what we want. We're going to go make shit happen. But first, as Mars comes to conjunct the South Node, it's like we need to bring this stuff up that's no longer serving us and let it the fuck go. And these things that are bringing up, Mars is, Mars is frustration. Mars is anger, right? Mars is that, that deep down, like, ah, like just when you like yell at yourself, when you're pissed off about something, when you're frustrated, a lot of frustration, irritation. And, you know, as this comes out individually, we're going to see it in the, in, in the world too. Okay. Like, you know, so on the macro, whatever it is that we see is going to be a mirror reflection of what we're all feeling inside. And right now with so many people having massive spiritual awakenings, this is going to be very intense, especially for the people that have just started to experience this awakening in the last few months. Okay. Just be ready for that. For a lot of anger to come up, be in Trigger Town. <laughs> you're you're taking the Trigger Train through Trigger Town, and you're running for office. All right, like this is this is going to require us. Uh, you know, Mars wants to control too. It, it it wants to get its hands on things in this physical world and just and just push it right, move it. it wants to you know make, just make shit happen. So with the South Node forcing it to let go of things. It's like things that we want to hold on to, things that we feel that we need. It's, it's the part of the ego that is very, very stubborn. All right, so this, this will be a difficult transit 
to let go of things that no longer serve us. But deep down, the feeling that we feel when it comes up is, is going to feel like we need it, right? This is, this is akin to like ego death, all right? And when we're experiencing an ego death, they can feel like we're really dying, all right? This deeply rooted fear, like guilt and shame are associated with anger as well, you know? Like, so try to be kind to yourself. But what will really help with this energy is exercise. It's physical movement, yoga, HIIT training, lifting weights, whatever your, whatever your, I don't want to say poison, but whatever your style that you prefer, you need to do something physical with this, okay? This is a great time to get out there and just be physical and, you know, get out there in the world and just move this physical energy through your body and make it happen, okay? And we have Jupiter here at 18 degrees. It's, it's, it's moving up. And uh, it's really starting to take off. And it's almost at the end of the second deacon, right? So Mars has been, has, I mean, I'm sorry, Jupiter has been, uh, already been through the first and three quarters way through the second deacon. The second deacon is where we're really setting this new foundation for our new life, okay? Once it starts to get into the third deacon, that's when it's going to conjunct Pluto and then Saturn. And that's, and then it'll retrograde and go back over um, Pluto again. So the third deacon is when it's like all these puzzle pieces that we're putting together now are really going to come together. Okay. So, you know, take advantage of this Jupiter energy and allow it to, you know, allow this motivation and this guidance to push you while staying centered. All right. So we also have Mercury retrograde, of course, right now. It's been retrograde for about a week. It's at nine degrees of uh, Pisces on this day. All right. So it's pretty close to the moon and the sun. Now, Mercury and Pisces, Mercury doesn't like being in Pisces, okay? Because it's like information overload. So this will make that Mars energy that much more confusing, okay? And this is emotional shit. So this is gonna be a very emotional time. And we also have, um, you know, we have Mars and the South Node sextile over to this new moon. So they're speaking clearly, okay? But that just means more shit's coming up, all right? That just means that all these emotions are gonna be being purged and it's going to be, you know, it's, it's, we may feel things that we don't want to feel, but we have to. All right. So just, if you have that in the back of your mind that you have to feel this to get it out, get it over with, get through it. You know, it's like, you got to go through the pain to get to the pleasure. All right. So bring that inner masochist out of you and just make it happen. All right. Now, now with this Mercury retrograde, whatever happened in, in the previous three weeks is, is what it's going over, but this can also bring back people, situations, and experiences that have had massive impacts on your emotional state to rediscover, like you were in a different place when this thing came in, this person or whatever came in, like maybe an ex will come back, okay? That happens a lot during Mercury retrograde, especially in water signs, okay? It's gonna re-trigger all these feelings that you thought you had, you had gone th or had, had worked through, all right? And it's going to re-trigger them saying, okay, now how are you gonna respond? From this new place did you really learn your lesson did you really learn your lesson so you have to ask yourself that okay because this is going to test you to your core and are you going to respond the same way or are you going to be able to take a step back and observe your response observe your trigger when it's at its deepest if you've done the work you will be able to do that if you have not done the work you're going to fall right down the same fucking rabbit hole so you know just be, you know, if you're, if you're watching this, you have been doing the work. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're not going to have a problem with it, but just be aware, just be cognizant. Okay. That whatever's coming back in is meant to teach you something. Now, whatever the outcome is, let go of it because you don't know. All right. There's no way of telling because there's so much change. There's so much change going on right here that we, we don't know where we're going to be next month. Okay. So, so allow, like, allow yourself to let go of any expected outcome. Be okay with not being okay with whatever happens because the universe is guiding you to your highest and, and, and best result, okay? That's what 2020 is all about. Facing your fears and raising your vibration to bring you into the life that your soul is craving and truly desires, okay? Now, we have Neptune here at 17 degrees. It's getting up there, guys. Once it gets to 18, you know, it's going to start getting into new territory. So, you know, Neptune moves very, very slow. We've never, you know, we've never seen it um, coming up this high in the degrees in Pisces in our lifetimes. Okay. It's been, it's been hundreds of years. So, you know, Neptune goes deep. It, it, it's, it's uncovering these deeper layers of our consciousness. 
All right, between that and Pluto, we, we, are, we are activating DNA that's been dormant forever. You know, they say, you know, we, have, um, we only use 3% of our DNA, the rest is junk DNA, it's bullshit, okay? The rest of our DNA is dormant, it's been suppressed or shut down. And that's where, you know, in this, in this day and age, all the, you know, electromagnetic uh, magnetic frequencies, like all the EMFs, all the GMOs in our food, all vaccines, antibiotics, prescription medications, all these things are designed to keep our vibration low. So the more you take care of yourself, the more you eat healthy and organic and, and, and invest in the education of your body and your mind and your spirit, the more your body and mind and spirit is going to be able to evolve. And as we evolve, we are creating a whole new way of life, a whole new, a whole, a whole new consciousness, right? A whole new way of approaching just humanity in and of itself. Okay, bringing back some things from hundreds of years ago, like indigenous people before it, we, it got infected by all the people bringing the modern world, you know, like the modern world is great. I love it. It's afforded us, you know, more, more sanitation and like a better, better living conditions. But at the same time, you know, it's brought on all these, all, all these fear-based, like suppressive motives and greed and, you know, and just shitty people, <laughs> just, just a lot of shitty people that are just greedy and manipulative and out for power to get the best of people. And that is shifting as we enter the age of Aquarius. Um, we are raising our conscience to the 5D so that we can, you know, it's all about loving humanity, all right? Living, the fifth dimension is living from the vibration of love. That is our foundation. That is where we're coming from and purging all this fucking fear. Done. So as Neptune continues to move through Pisces, that's going to uncover more extrasensory perceptions, aka psychic gifts. More weird paranormal shit that, you know, we may not understand, okay? Which, if you embrace it and you embody it, then you will integrate it and become, a, you know, a greater version of yourself, a, a deeper version of yourself. If you do not, if you fight it, that's where the addiction comes into play. That's where escapism and detachment from reality. Okay, so we have to make sure that we're working with these energies and being honest with ourselves, like brutally honest. Okay. And just looking at ourselves like, Hey, look, why the fuck does this keep happening in my life? Am I repeating some kind of pattern? Universe, God, spirit, show me, tell, teach me. Right. And the triggers are the teachers. Your triggers are there to teach you what you need to know, but you have to look at it. You have to feel it. You have to face yourself. That's why, you know, a trick that I use whenever I'm going through some deep shit like this, is I look at myself in the mirror and I do my I am statements, right? You know, I love you. It's so interesting how a lot of people, when they look at themselves in the mirror and you look at yourself in the eyes, right in the eyeballs, and you say, I love you, how difficult that is. I've seen people break down and cry or not even be able to do it at first, freak out. There is some really deep down, dark, hidden shit in there that we need to excavate. And this Mars conjunct south node is the perfect energy to face head on and excavate that shit, okay? And as Saturn continues to separate from Pluto and go towards Aquarius, that is, that is pulling us like a tractor beam into the future of growth. And this growth is similar to like the birthing process, right? The birthing process, look, it's not fun at first, but it brings this beautiful, perfect, you know, little human into the world. And it's just pure light. It's scary as fuck, but it's also beautiful as fuck. Like that is where the magic is. When you embrace the beauty of love, it transcends all fear. It transcends all pain. It is like, you know, pain can go to 99%, but love is that 100%. Okay. And that this is bringing us through that, that last bit of the threshold to get us to that 100%. And once we tap it, once we experience it, we have a reference point. I mean, once we have that reference point, we may go down a little bit again, but we can always come back to that reference point, okay? So we also have uh, Black Moon Lilith and Chiron um, at one and three degrees of Aries, respectively, okay? With Black Moon Lilith at one degrees and Chiron at three degrees of Aries, 
this is um, a very vulnerable energy as well that's bringing up the deeper aspects of our ego. And when I say ego, I'm talking about how we individuate ourselves, right? Ego is not good or bad. It's only what we make it. Okay, so, you know, if we have toxic aspects of our ego, that will be identified and purged as well. But our ego, like, it's my ego talking to you, right? It's how I individuate myself. But I'm helping to educate people through my own expression of love from what I've experienced, right? I'm not sitting here just trying to get the better of anybody. I'm taking my time to do this because I love humanity and I want to share my message with the world. Okay. So, so we are going through a purging and cleansing process of the divine masculine and you know, the divine feminine has already really been through like the, the fundamental cleansing. So really it's really the divine masculine and the collective unconscious right now. Okay. Um, and, uh, and that is being thrown into our face, basically. Chiron is, is, is that unhealed wound that we just cannot heal now. The key is, is that to recognize that there's nothing to heal, right? That this requires acceptance. And with it being square over to Mars and South Node and square to the, and, and square to the North Node, okay? These two energies being in that position, okay? With this massive, very powerful T-square going on, this is the universe saying, hey, dude, you need to look at this deep, vulnerable spot within you. This is going to shine a light on where you're fucking up in life, how you're holding yourself back and why. Now, if you're really doing some shady shit, that shady shit's going to come out, okay? It's, it's, it's going to be exposed, but it needs to be exposed to be purified. So if you're doing shady shit, stop it. The universe knows and you're going to be called out on it. There is no more time to waste. We are here, people. This needs to be done now. Okay. So we also have Venus in Aries. Venus. Okay. So I actually kind of like Venus in Aries. All right. Venus in Aries is a bit impulsive. All right. It's like, you know, I want to just, you know, I want to feel good now, right now. Let's go. Right. Um, but it, 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 it can get, you know, really excited at first and then put her out real quick. So you really want to um, try to keep that impulsiveness, you know, down boy. <laughs> um, keep that at bay. And once it gets into Taurus, you know, uh, Venus rules Taurus and it'll even out a little bit. So, you know, with all this other shenanigans going on, you know, we may get super, you know, impulsive about our emotional state. And, you know, this could make us, you know, want to jump into something that may not be the best thing to jump into is all I'm saying. Okay, so be careful of that. Now we have Uranus as well at three degrees of Taurus now, and that's trying over to Mars in the South Node. So, you know, that is really great, really exciting for, you know, evolving this energy. Uh, Uranus is this evolutionary energy. Now, the thing is, it's on shaky ground, right? Or this is shaking up the ground that, you know, Taurus is a fixed earth sign. So it's very, very, it likes to be very stable. Now, when Uranus comes around, it's like, oh, I'm going to make this foundation shaky. I'm not going to keep this stable at all because you guys need to wake the fuck up. All right. That's basically what Uranus is saying. And being trying over to Mars in the South Node is like, okay, time to open it up. Time to face this shit. Time to feel it. So it's, there's going to be this earthquakey kind of feeling going on underneath the surface in your, in your energy, in your mind. And that earthquakey feeling is what's purging out this deeper stuff. That's like the fundamental energy underneath there to get rid of all this Mars, you know, toxic Mars energy. Okay. So that's where like, watch your anger, watch your frustration, watch your irritation, watch all those kind of vibrations um, because they're going to be coming out hard and fast and it's going to feel vulnerable and you're going to feel weak and you're going to feel, you know, like all these things that you thought you worked through. There's another layer. There's always another layer. And the big thing is once you get to a point, you realize that, that there's always another layer and you're like, you know what? Okay, this sucks. I'm going through it, but at least I know it's temporary because once you work through this, then that part of it's gone and you become stronger and you increase your self-confidence and your self-worth and you grow and you learn and you vibrate that from your being and everything is just better. You are becoming stronger 
at the soul level. So there are some difficult energies here, but they are difficult to teach us. They are difficult for a reason, similar to how boot camp is difficult to go into the military, right? You get in the military, you go through boot camp, it sucks, but then we come out, if you've never been in shape before, you, you, you get through there, you lose 30 pounds, you're in great shape, you're disciplined, now you're waking up in the morning and going for a run and feeling good and feeling healthy, you're eating healthy, you know, and now you have a career. So it's good for people that don't have any structure in their lives, right? And this is like an energetic restructuring right here. So this is like an energetic boot camp, you know, that we're going through and we're going to have waves of it. And this particular energy is one of those waves that's going to be emotional, vulnerable, and trigger happy. But it's necessary, okay? Now, the good thing is um, the, the new moon is trying to the north node and sextile to the south node and, and, uh, and, and Mars. So being trying to the no, trying and sextile to the nodes is a really great thing. That means that we're going to be seeing, seeing the purpose of what we're going through, right? Now, it may, seeing the purpose, or I should say feeling the purpose, okay? Because in Pisces, it still might be a little bit cloudy. You don't exactly see all the details, but you feel it, you know. You know something good is coming. You know you're evolving. You know you're making shit happen. We just have to really kind of wait till Mercury goes direct in order to really put some of the like last puzzle pieces together, okay? So I wanna go over uh, the inside degrees with you to, uh, to show you the, the energetic activity of four degrees of Pisces where this new moon is, okay? So it says mushrooms springing up everywhere. You've been engulfed in external and internal factors and facets that suddenly are there everywhere and come right in, no boundaries, no separate container. The universal life force carries and representative and capable of pulling away from the collective call of life, is intoxicated with it all, massively taken over by emerging cur uh, currents and whatever feels vitally important, impressionable and suggestible with an unbelievable depth and intensity. Absorbing the shock of all this is happening here raw and impelled to rally people around to bring everybody alive to make it happen. You ooze conviction and resonance with a basic core spirit in each and all 300% all the way. So this is incredibly intuitive, okay? This is deeply feeling, deeply, deeply feeling stuff. With, so we are really connecting to the collective unconscious in a very profound way, all right? And as we all, as we all co connect at that deeper energetic level, there's a part of us that knows that we all need to come together to support each other, right? So there's this deeper sense of universal love going on. At the same time, with all the triggers coming up, you know, it's like, all right, like I'm just gonna have to hold space. There's a lot of holding space and getting a clearer vision of exactly what it is you're meant to do here in this next chapter, okay? So it's gonna be clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> so just be ready for getting some clarity, which is going to bring up, like, if you're going to get one answer that brings up 10 more questions and it's going to make you feel vulnerable and angry, but then as it goes through, you're going to put the puzzle pieces together and then it's going to make sense over time. And this is a test that's going to teach you and show you that you can do it. Because let's face it, you don't really have a choice, right? And if you are in the awakening process, which if you're watching this, most likely you are, then you are going to feel this big time, okay? Pisces is deeply emotional. So it's, it's uncovering a deeper layer of our emotions. And with that, it's going to uncover a deeper layer, layer of our empathy and of our uh, you know, intuitive insights. So you're gonna feel energy deeper. So you may be having lucid dreams or astral traveling, or when you touch someone, you can actually see in your third eye something that they have going on, right? Or when you get around people, they're just gonna pour their heart out to you in a whole different frequency, a whole different way. Or just talking to someone is gonna help them get over something and they're just gonna be like, oh my God, thank you so much. Just being you, being your, your presence is going to activate the, the, the awakening process in other people. And you know that requires a lot of self-work and a lot of responsibility. But once you're at that point when you just, you know you have it in you to do that, it's almost like you take on that responsibility with like a badge of honor. You're like, all right, 
Let's do this. I'm ready. And you know you're going to hit challenges. You know you're going to hit vulnerability. You know you're going to hit roadblocks. But each step, you know it's also strengthening you. So stay strong, my friends. Stay allowing this energy to roll through you. Stay open to all this new weird shit that's, go that's going to be coming in, okay? And be open to new opportunities, things from the past coming back to learn the lessons and become a new, healthier, stronger, and more aligned version of yourself, okay? So thank you very much for listening to this reading. I hope that you got some clarity from it. If you have any questions, if you'd like an astrology reading from me, um, just comment here, or you can go to my Instagram at spiritual underscore bodybuilder and DM me there. And um, I also do a daily energy report on my Instagram. Please feel free to check that out. And other than that, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Much love. Namaste.